the Google Pixel graphics drivers update is coming. And if you're actually in the latest beta, you can test them out now. So if you like to test out the beta stuff and see how it works, see if there's any improvements, you can go ahead and do that ahead of the official release, which is probably slated for about March. And there are some promising results. And I said that there would likely be some promising results. Why? Because for whatever reason, Google decided to launch the Pixel 10 phones with the new graphics uh, processing unit inside the chip. And it didn't even have supported drivers for Android 16, which is the biggest head scratching thing of all, but also didn't support the latest version of Vulkan, which is something that has to do with all that as well for graphics. And yeah, some of the games are not optimized for it. So we had reports of some people not being able to run Genshin Impact or not being able to run it very well. And if you don't play games and you probably don't even know what I'm talking about and wondering what a Genshin Impact is, but it's typically, it, it's a very hardware intensive game that a lot of people use to test out how good phones can actually play games. It's a very nice game, very beautiful, beautiful soundtrack, beautiful graphics. Well, I've been looking around at some people's results on the internet and Somebody on Forbes, because, you know, they do some tech stuff, they said that they got an 18% performance improvement on Genshin Impact, which is huge. Like, that is a huge improvement. They also noted they got maybe only like 2 or 3% improvement on things like Call of Duty Mobile, and I've seen some other different websites that have shown increases in frames per second from like 5 frames per second, 6, 7, different things like that. So, what we do know is that definitively there is a performance boost for gaming, there's also a Geekbench improvement. I think it was like 10% improvement in the overall Geekbench score for graphic stuff. And some people, like the people in this Forbes article, reported that it was crashing under testing on the Intuitu benchmarking program, which I put like an asterisk next to all that. Here's the thing. Yes, there are improvements. Yes, they're verifiable. But whenever it comes to, okay, it's having issues with a benchmark testing software or something like that, Bear in mind, it is still in beta, so that is expected. <laughs> it's something that is not out of the realm of ordinary. It's not something that I'm even remotely concerned about because by the time we actually get the new graphics driver in the Pixel 10 phones, it's going to be about three months from now. So there's plenty of time for that. And, and there's one other thing that I do want to address here because I've talked about this. It's not all about the benchmarks. It's not all about the graphics processing units. It's not all about the drivers. You can have the latest and greatest in all of these things, but here's one of the biggest issues that comes to performance whenever it comes to gaming with these phones, and that is that a lot of manufacturers or a lot of software developers don't actually have their games optimized to take advantage of this chipset and the graphics processor unit that's inside of it. That's a big thing. As much as the software optimization and having the correct drivers and the most up-to-date drivers does show that there is performance improvements that you can get there at the end of the day if these games aren't actually optimized to run on the tensor it's going to get some sort of a default driver loaded some sort of a default uh, software performance it's not going to be something that's optimized and we've seen this in other phones with other games where you have specifically optimized games for certain phones where they do run better than they do on other ones just because the software developers like hey we're going to do this special thing for OnePlus, or we're going to do this special thing for Samsung, or we're going to do this special thing for Xiaomi or whatever. And then they prioritize and make sure that the, the game runs better on their phone. So there are like a bunch of different things at work here, talking about the graphics driver, talking about making sure it's up to date, talking about optimization, not only on Android side, but also from the game developers as well, but it is nice to see something that's encouraging as an 18% improvement when some people previously reported in a minority of situations that the game didn't even work on their Pixel 10 phone. So I'm happy about this. I'm happy it's finally coming down the pipeline. I talked about this the other day that it was finally revealed that the graphics update is in the March update. Well, it's in the beta, but we'll expect it probably in the March update. So we still have a little while to wait for this. So there will be more tweaking, there will be more optimization, there will probably be a few more gaming developers that decide, hey, we're going to go ahead and start prioritizing this because people are getting these phones in their hands. And it's one of those things where the more and more people buy Pixel phones, the more and more you will see software developers cater towards this platform or actually optimize their games to run on this hardware. It's a little difficult 
whenever Google takes some graphics card basically off the shelf, off the beaten path, that's not one of the main ones. So whenever these software developers, they make games, there's like XYZ, there's like the top three, top four graphics processors that are inside of these chips. And those are well optimized for because they have familiar architecture, they've been around for a little while, or they're emerging ones coming out with new chips. And I know this is a lot of geek speak, but I like to try and explain kind of the process that goes behind some of these things because it's not it's not just a cookie cutter approach, right? So whenever you have something that is specific to different phones, like the iPhone, whenever you have things like the Snapdragon 8 Elite Generation 1, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, the Snapdragon 8 Generation 5, like a lot of these different chips, they have a lot of long long term relationships with these companies and they're used to designing games that will work well on their products. So whenever you take this as a power VR GPU or something like that, that's inside of the Pixel 10 phone with the Tensor 5. It's just not something that's really been used lately. If a phone hasn't used one of these chipsets with this graphics processor unit in a long time, and this is not even the latest one. So it, it's very weird that Google did this. I, I don't know why they didn't go with like a Molly GPU, which is the most popular one that you see in a lot of different different chipsets and that they want this power VR one. I, I don't really understand that other than maybe they worked out something with this manufacturer to where they could design the chipset to prioritize and work well with their AI stuff. Because here's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of the AI processes are actually handled or performed in conjunction with the GPU. So we know that Google has prioritized AI much higher than any other developer, especially over gaming. Like gaming is something that is there and people can do, and they're all horsepower with almost a four gigahertz chipset is gonna run 99% of games just fine. But whenever you have that tailored GPU experience working with the custom Tensor chip that is designed by Google and made with TSMC, it does give it a leg up in certain departments whenever it comes to handling AI requests. Because before, the, now we have these Tensor units, right? We have the Tensor processing unit. We have the AI cores that we have inside of the, the A, process, A series processors with, with Apple. We have the hex core processor that's in some of the other ones. They have a specific chipset built into the processor that handles AI tasks. Uh, like it offloads that so the regular CPU, the regular processor, it is not having to do all the specialized processing for these AI tasks and these AI algorithms and things like that. So before, before we had all this reliance on these tensor units, these different types of AI processing units, it was just the processor and the GPU, the graphics card. Basically, the processor and the graphics card were handling all of the AI processing. So what we have with the Tensor processing unit inside of the Tensor 5 is it handles a lot of that stuff. And then once it handles and prioritizes and processes that data, it uses the GPU in conjunction with the regular processor to handle those requests. So that's probably why Google went that route was because they worked with the PowerVR guys and like, hey, we want you to use your chip with us. We're going to do these custom things with it. That would make sense to me. But at the same point in time, I mean, this is just me talking in a vacuum. I don't work with Google. I don't work with Pixel. I don't work with Android. I'm not on the back end having access to these things or these decisions. But that's why I think that they did it was well, so that they could use it for their custom chip so they could use it to prioritize more AI stuff than actual gaming. But we'll see how things work out when the rubber meets the road. Of course, it'll be available probably in March. If you want to test out the beta now, if you've been having problems with gaming, if gaming is a priority for you, this will definitely, in almost every instance, give you a boost in your gaming performance, whether that's in frames per second, smoothness, loading, optimization, all those different things. So anyway, that's enough nerd speak for today. <laughs> it's the day after Christmas. I'll save some of this for the new year. If you have any questions, comments, gripes, concerns, complaints, all those things, please, of course, go to the comment section. I'll do my best to get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you guys next time.